and a lot of certain uncertainty certainly is out there. We wanted to take a deeper dive into what Baylor employees have been experiencing. From concerns over halted projects and now the layoffs, the stakes certainly are high, not just for researchers, but for the future of medical breakthroughs. Joining us this afternoon to talk more about this is Dr. Hardeep Singh, a leading biomedical researcher at Baylor College of Medicine. Dr. Singh, thanks so much for being with us this afternoon. Thanks for having me on. You've mentioned the instability of NIH funding. Can you share how this uncertainty is impacting and affecting the overall research environment at Baylor College of Medicine? Sure, Andy. Uh, you know, as researchers, we are constantly living in uh, because we go from grant to grant to uh, make sure that we are funded, our people are funded, our labs, our infrastructure to do research and innovation is funded. This time it's just different. It's more significant. Uh, it's much more of a, a threat to our research. Um, so we cannot make those projections that we usually do. We're projecting two years ahead to get new grants to uh, stay in business. Uh, we just can't make those projections. I myself have about a million and a half dollars that I bring in from the Department of Health and Human Services. I have 15 people on my team who do research on uh, preventing misdiagnosis in healthcare, um, and we just can't make those projections right now, and we need to look for other sources of funding as well. Dr. Singh, how do you think uncertainty around the funding affects the speed of scientific progress and really the health of the public at large? Yeah, you know, this is a question uh, that I think the general public sort of really should uh, hear a sort of a simplified answer to because oftentimes it's not clear what the connection between science, the federal government uh, discoveries and innovation is. I think of um, the federal government layers and this, these cuts, by the way, as you heard um, in the in, in our segment, is not just at National Institutes of Health. It's also Department of Health and Human Services, Department of Education, the CDC, there's F. FDA, there's EPA, uh, and what we need to realize is it's almost like if you think of a Swiss cheese um, sort of model, we have a Swiss cheese model in patient safety, it's the sort of subject that I study, and you can imagine that there are layers of Swiss cheese, the Swiss cheese slices are preventing harm to the public. And if we layer those Swiss cheese slices together, we want to make sure that the harm doesn't pass from the left to the right. Think of those institutions that I just mentioned as those layers of Swiss cheese that are protecting us, the protecting the public from harms, whether the harm is from, um, you know, bad water, bad air, uh, bad medicine, bad health care. We are basically um, in a stage that those holes in Swiss cheese are lining up and the protection mechanisms that we have to prevent harm to the public are going away. And so this is a long-term threat because it is sort of dismantling um, several institutions of the federal government at the same time. So all of those institutions that I just mentioned are being impacted. So the science is what makes sure that we have the right research, the right discoveries, the right innovation, so we can protect our patients and our public from harm. And we're sort of like making sure that those that scientific pillars don't stand. So if the scientific pillars don't stand, there inevitably will be harm, unfortunately, to the public. And I think that's what people need to understand, that the federal government the scientific institutions and the academic institutions such as ours are very well connected and we are integral to how we make sure that the public stays healthy and the public stays uh, protected from harm. This is all encompassing. Everything, as you said, is so interconnected. You mentioned finding other sources of funding. What does that look like? Well, currently, the, um, the the types of other sources of funding are quite bleak because most of our funding comes from the federal government. So that's another sort of fact from the, that the general public needs to understand. The reason we are at the cutting edge of science and technology in the world is because we have the best scientific infrastructure in the entire world. We have the maximum amount of scientific funding that is being funneled to create the research, the cures, the discoveries, the therapeutics, the diagnostics, the testings that we have. All of that thing is being created through science. and. The issue is we want to make sure that we maintain that. So we can go to some foundations 
We can go to philanthropy, but those diverse sources of funding will not be able to compete with the large federal investment that we have made for the last almost four or five decades to make sure that the scientific enterprise in the United States is the best in the world. And, and so unfortunately, the choices that are left for other sources of funding are few. Uh, it basically some foundations, some philanthropy, but all federal institutions, and I mentioned many of those already in my previous Swiss cheese model, this description are being impacted. So there's not a lot of places that we can go. And Dr. Singh, are there actions that you think the scientific community or lawmakers can take to help ensure more stable and long-term funding for biomedical research? Well, absolutely. The number one is you're inviting me to your TV show, so thank you for that, because this gives me an opportunity to talk to the general public about what we do. We as a scientific community need to do a much better job of informing the general public about what we do, how their lives are impacted through science and discoveries and cures, and you know their health is impacted, health care is impacted. For some reason, uh, I mean, I haven't sort of mentioned so far, but my work is focused on improving the healthcare system as a whole, to improve patient safety, to reduce medical errors, to reduce misdiagnosis. So we need to do a better job of letting the public know this is a type of research that we do. This is how we benefit you. We create the discovery, the innovation that helps you, and that could create a much better message and much better, better uh, sort of opinion about the public because people don't think, oh, it's just the researchers and the scientists. Well, I don't, we don't know what they do. Maybe they go to space. But there's a lot more that the researcher uh, community can do to sort of advocate for themselves, including myself, to the general public, making sure you understand what we do uh, in improving health and improving health care and protecting people from harm. You also mentioned lawmakers. Absolutely. I think the policymakers and the lawmakers, if we can get them to advocate for better uh, scientific funding, because we were already in a state that we were not necessarily uh, being the best funded. I've actually struggled with many grants. I've had many grant failures over time. Um, it's very competitive world out there. We could certainly, even in the normal circumstances, even a year ago, uh, it was hard to get grants. So I think a scientific investment on in federal funding, increasing that and making sure that we everybody understand it's for the benefit of all uh, will really help uh, the U.S. Uh, public and making sure that we stay healthy and then away from harm. Thank Painting you. a much clearer picture this afternoon for us of what that research landscape will look like moving forward. Dr. Hardeep Singh, Baylor College of Medicine, we appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.